Today I'm going to show you how to build highs on Windows. There are some instructions on the highs GitHub page uh, here, how to compile highs. We're going to be following a slightly different order, but we're going to be doing all of these steps. So if you prefer to uh, read instructions rather than do everything just through a video, then uh, head to this uh, GitHub page. I'll leave a link in the video description and you can read through the instructions there. For the most straightforward build of highs, we should use Visual Studio 2017, but that's an old version and today it's hard to find. So we're going to use the latest version, which at time of recording is Visual Studio 2022. So this is the Visual Studio website, visualstudio.microsoft.com forward slash downloads. And I'll leave a link to this in the video description. Now using the latest version instead of the 2017 version will require one extra little step, which I'll discuss in more detail when we get to it. So for now we can scroll down to Visual Studio 2022, go over here where it says download Visual Studio and select the Community 2022 edition, that's the free version. The download should only take a moment, and it will now be in my downloads folder. And now we can run the installer. So the download was really quick because it's just a kind of online installer, so the actual proper download of Visual Studio will happen from within this installer. So we'll click continue. And we just want to select the elements we need for building highs. So we come down to where it says desktop development C++, and that's the only one we need to select. After that, we can click install, and you can choose if you want to install it while it downloads, or if you want to download it all and then install. I'm going to choose install while downloading and hit install. So that's going to take a little while. While we wait for Visual Studio to install, let's talk about IPP. Whenever we use a convolution or audio analyzer module, Highs has to perform some fast Fourier transform calculations, or FFTs for short. To do this, it uses a code library that provides the necessary functionality. There are a number of FFT libraries available and they vary in efficiency. Highs by default is configured on Windows for use with a library called Intel Performance Primitives, or IPP. IPP is a proprietary library from Intel that provides very efficient FFT calculations on Windows. It's also possible to use other FFT libraries when building highs, and I'll be posting a video about that for my Patreon subscribers later in the month. We don't have to install an FFT library, but if we don't, highs will fall back to a set of less efficient FFT functions provided by Juice. But remember, this only makes a difference if you're using the Convolution Reverb modules or the Audio Analyzer modules inside highs. In this video I'm going to show you how to build highs both with and without IPP. So this is the IPP website, and we're going to download IPP as part of the One API Toolkit. This is the easiest way to work with IPP and highs. So we'll click Get It Now, and we'll select Windows from the drop-down. For the installer type we'll select online, and then we'll hit download. Now it prompts us to sign in or sign up, just ignore that and come over here where it says continue as guest and click on that, and it will just download. So now that should also be in my downloads folder, let's just minimize the Visual Studio installer there. So here's the installer for IPP. It's important to install IPP after Visual Studio has been installed, so that the IPP library will be integrated automatically with Visual Studio. So we'll just wait for Visual Studio to finish its install, we're almost there. And now Visual Studio is loading up for the first time. We'll select not now, maybe later. We'll go with the dark theme. We'll click continue without code. And now Visual Studio has loaded. I think it's still doing a couple of bits in the background, but it's pretty much loaded. So we can close Visual Studio now, and close the Visual Studio installer. And back in my downloads folder, we can launch the IPP installer. Click continue. And we'll check the box to accept the license terms. 
click customize and now we're going to deselect everything except this one here integrated performance primitives that's the IPP so just deselect everything except that one so once you're done you should only have that one selected which will install about 962.1 megabytes of data so we'll click this arrow to go to the next stage and now we can select the integration we want we have Visual Studio 2022 installed and it's detected that so that's the one that should be checked this is why we have to install IPP once Visual Studio had already been installed then click this arrow to go to the next one click I do not consent to the collection of my information click install and now we wait for that to install so while that's installing we can download the high source code so High's development is managed using a version control system called Git. I have a couple of videos about this which I'll link below. The public repository for High's is located at github.com so that's where we need to go to get the source code and there'll be a link for this in the video description. Clicking the branches link opens a list of versions of the source code and shows us when each one was updated. As a rule of thumb, you'll generally want to use the most recently updated one. If you're ever unsure about which one is best to use, or if the one you've tried doesn't build successfully, head over to the Highs forum and someone there will be able to help. Rule number one of Highs development is to never have more than one copy of the source code on your system at a time. Ignoring this rule will invariably lead to confusing issues. If you need to use another version then be sure to completely remove the previous one first. A better way of working with different versions of highs is to use git and if you want more information about that you can watch the git videos on my channel. Today we're going to use the develop branch as that's the most recently updated and has all the latest features. Next we need to click the green code button and select download zip. If you're a seasoned Git user, then you can skip this step and use the standard Git clone and Git checkout procedure. Okay, so that will now be in my downloads folder. Oh, we're finished with the IPP install, so we'll just click finish there. And we'll go to my downloads folder, and there is the high source code. And you should decide where you want to put this, but for this video, I'm just going to keep it in my downloads folder. So now we need to extract this zip file. And now we can delete the zip file and we can also delete these installers. We don't need those anymore. So in the highs develop folder, uh, it's actually extracted to a subfolder called highs develop. And we can see all of the files and folders that make up the highs source code. Let's make this a little larger. You don't need to be too concerned with all of these folders unless you're making modifications to the source code. However, there are two that we need to know a little bit about. The first is the tools folder. Let's open that and now we'll go into the SDK folder. And we've got this zip file in here, sdk.zip. So we need to extract that into this folder. Make sure it doesn't extract into a further subfolder. When it's complete, it should look like mine with the ASIO SDK 2.3 and VST3 SDK folders. These folders contain code libraries that are used when we build highs and export our own highs projects. Okay, now we'll go up one level, so we're back in the tools folder, and we'll open the folder called Producer. In here, we have the Producer app. This is a program that comes as part of the Juice framework and is used to manage Juice based projects. As Hides is a Juice based project, we're going to need to use Producer in order to build it. You'll probably want to save a shortcut on your desktop or pin it to your taskbar. We'll be coming back to it very soon. I'm just going to pin it down here to the taskbar. For now, we'll go back to the root folder of our high source code 
and we're going to open the projects folder, that's the other one we're interested in. This is where the juice project files for highs live, and we can see that there is a plugin project and a standalone project. 99% of the time you're going to be using the standalone version of highs, so that's the one we're going to build today. The process for building the plugin version is pretty much the same though. Inside the standalone folder we have a few subfolders and a juice project file. That's the one with the .juicer extension. Okay, now we'll open the juicer file with the producer application. So first we'll open producer. And it will look like this. And then we're going to drag and drop our highs standalone.juicer file onto the producer application. If you see any little pop-ups, usually down here in the left hand corner, that tell you there are missing or incorrect paths, just ignore them and select the never annoy me again option. So producer is probably a place you'll spend quite a bit of time when building highs and exporting your own projects. So it's worth taking a bit of time now to look around. The first thing to be aware of is that at the top of the window, it shows the name of the project we're currently viewing. This is super important because by default, Producer will always open the last project you were working on. And if you don't realize this, you can sometimes find yourself editing and building a different project to the one you were expecting. So get in the habit of checking which project Producer has loaded when you open it. On the left hand side, we have a breakdown of the project. Clicking one of these sections expands that section and collapses the others. You'll probably never need to venture into the file explorer section, but occasionally you'll want to change things in the modules and exporters section. The modules section lists all of the highs and juice modules that will form the application once it's compiled. The exporters section is where we can configure the settings used to build the project on different operating systems. Each exporter section has a subcategory for debug and release. These are two different build configurations we can use. A debug build is larger and less optimized than a release build, but it compiles more quickly, so it's great if you're making changes to the high source code and want to do some rapid debugging. Most of the time though, we're going to be compiling release builds. As we're on Windows, we're interested in the Visual Studio exporter section. As I mentioned earlier, Highs by default expects us to be using the IPP library. In order to enable or disable IPP, there are three values that need to be set. First, we need to change the value over here of use underscore IPP. We need to set it to either one or zero. We set it to one if we want to use IPP and zero if we don't want to use IPP. I'm gonna leave it set to one because we're going to use IPP today. Next, we have to set the use library one API dropdown. That's if we scroll down here, that's down here. Use IPP library one API dropdown. We need to set that to yes, default linking if we're using IPP or we leave it as default no if we're not using IPP. I'm gonna set it to yes, default linking. Lastly, we need to open the module section, select high core, and scroll to the drop down for use IPP. That's this one here. We need to set it to either enabled or disabled. So if you're not using IPP, you set it to disabled. We're going to use IPP, so we'll set it to enabled. Now we're ready to build highs. So we need to go to the file menu and click save project and open in IDE. That will save this producer file and it will launch the project inside Visual Studio. Okay, because we're using the latest version of Visual Studio, we have to perform an extra step. But if you're using Visual Studio 2017, you can skip this. So we're actually being prompted for this extra step, so we can just hit OK. But I'll show you what to do if that prompt doesn't appear, because it doesn't always show up. So we can just click Close on that. Okay, so if that prompt doesn't show up, you need to come over here to the Solution Explorer and right-click on the solution 
and come down and select retarget solution and then you'll get that same window and just click OK and it will give you some output down here and it will let you know if the retargeting worked. Basically it says here one completed so that means it worked. If it said one failed then it didn't work but I've never had it fail. So from this menu up here we can select either debug or release. I ignore the other two options. Debug and release are the same as we were looking at earlier inside Producer. It's usually a good idea to select debug the first time you're building highs because this will run through the process more quickly than a release build and allow you to see any issues before you commit the time to building a release version. And next we go to build and select build solution. Now we wait for Visual Studio to build highs and we get to see the output of that process down here. You may occasionally see warning messages appear in the output box, but you don't need to worry about them. However, if you see error or fatal error messages, then that means there is a problem that will prevent highs from compiling successfully. There's one of the warnings I was talking about. It says the word warning, so we don't need to worry about it. But if it had the word error or fatal error, then that's something to worry about because it will prevent highs from building. Okay, now it says down here build succeeded, so that means our build of highs has now completed successfully. And if we go back to our project folder, so projects, standalone, we now have this builds folder. And here we can see an output folder for each operating system. Because we're on Windows, the only one we're interested in is the Visual Studio 2017 one. If we go in there, go into x64, go into debug, go into app. And this is the one we're interested in, the one that ends in .exe. This is our highs debug executable. We can now open it and see highs in all its glory. But this is a debug build, so it's very inefficient and the file size is quite large. We can ignore these two pop-ups. This pop-up is something you only see in a debug build and you don't need to concern yourself with it. But there is highs. That is how it looks on first run. We can see the file size is 74.3 megabytes. When we compile the release build, it'll be quite a bit smaller. A lot of the intermediate files and folders here were created as part of the build process, and some of them are specific to the debug build. Leaving them here when we make the release build might confuse the compiler and cause issues, so we need to tidy up before we build the release build. We could just delete the entire builds folder, but another way is to let Visual Studio do this tidying up for us. So we'll do it that way. So back in Visual Studio, we go to the Build menu and we select Clean Solution. And it says here, One Succeeded. So that means it cleaned the Build folder just fine. We can take a look at that. So if we go into Builds, Visual Studio, X64, Debug, App, there's now a lot less in there. Notice it's also deleted our Debug EXE. So if you wanted to keep that, you'd have to copy it out of here and put it somewhere else. Now that the build folder has been cleaned, we're ready to build the release version of highs. You should always clean the build folder like this when switching between debug and release, or between building the highs plugin and the standalone version, and between building different versions of highs. This is also true when you're building your own highs projects in Visual Studio as well. So now we can build the release version. We'll select release from this dropdown and we'll go to build, build solution. This one will take a bit longer than the debug version. Okay, we're at the generating code stage. You can see that here in the output. Now, depending on your system, this can take quite a long time, 10 to 20 minutes. Don't worry if it just seems like it's hanging, it's still doing stuff. As long as this little animation is going over here, Visual Studio is still active. The better your system, the faster this stage will go. OK, and it says build succeeded. Now, I just want to talk about a couple of errors you may get and how to fix them. So there are two common errors and they will appear in this error list usually. One error is that it might complain that the SDK version doesn't match. And you can use the Visual Studio installer to install a different SDK. That was the installer we used when we installed Visual Studio. So you can use that to install the SDK it's asking for. Or you can go over here and we've um, got the high standalone app, so we're not clicking solution, we're going to select high standalone app, right click on that, go to properties, and select general over here, 
And then on the right hand side, we've got Windows SDK version. Just make sure this drop down is set to latest installed version and then restart your build process. Just click build solution and that should overcome that problem. The other error you might get is it will say something about running out of heap space or the compiler has run out of heap space. That basically means the compiler is trying to use a lot of RAM and it's actually used all of the system's RAM and it can't continue. So there are two solutions. The first one is to install more RAM. The second solution is to right click and go back into the properties of the standalone app. So make sure you right click on high standalone app, not the solution. And then in this section, C++, go down to, um, oh, actually this is the right one, just click C++. And then on the right hand side, where it says multiprocessor compilation, set this to no. And this means it's only going to use a single thread to compile highs. So it's going to take a very long time compared to a multi-threaded compilation, but you won't hit that running out of memory issue. There are ways to fine tune this and you can look that up if you want to, where you can set how many threads it uses. And that way you still get a bit of the advantage of multiprocessor compilation without it eating up all your RAM. But this is the quick and dirty solution to solve that problem. Okay, so let's take a look at our release build. And there it is, and this one's 33 megabytes, as opposed to the debug build, which was about 70 megabytes. And there it is. And we don't get that other pop-up because this is a release build. So I'm going to pin this to my taskbar for quick access in the future. We'll close Visual Studio now. And we'll close Producer. And we can close File Explorer. Well, that highs build was a success, and I hope this has been an easy guide for you to follow. If you're having any issues with your highs build, then search on the highs forum because a solution has probably already been posted. If you can't find a solution, then make a new post, and I'm sure someone will be able to help get you up and running. Well, that's all I've got for you today. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can check out my channel, and please click the subscribe button or join me on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.